work session is a VDOT update. Ms. Worley. Welcome. How are you doing, Ms. Worley? Hi. How are you? Uh, just a brief introduction. My name is Rebecca Worley. I'm the resident engineer for VDOT's Chesterfield residency. And we maintain and operate the roads in Chesterfield County, Amelia County, and Powhatan County. So I believe all of you have probably seen this slide before, but I was asked specifically to come to talk about maintenance. So I thought it would be good to give an overview of the inventory that we're maintaining in Chesterfield County. Um, so you'll see here we have over 4,400 lane miles. And you can see the breakout of interstate, primary, and secondary routes. Um, 385 structures and bridges in Chesterfield County, and we are the second largest road network in Virginia, um, second only to Fairfax County. Um, and I will add that that inventory of 4,400 lane miles is probably a little outdated because we take in anywhere from 30 to 40 additional lane miles in Chesterfield County annually through our street acceptance process. So just so you can see the Chesterfield residency and the three counties that we represent, this is a breakdown of our area headquarters that we have performing maintenance in the three counties. We have one area headquarters in Amelia County, one in Powhatan, and five in Chesterfield, um, geographically broken out to serve Chesterfield County. Um, it includes 71 field maintenance positions at our residency. Um, in addition, we have a 10-person specialty crew that serves all three of our counties. Um, they do specialty work like concrete work and repairs, as well as some of our state force construction projects that I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, in addition to our residency office, we also have an, a Richmond District Interstate Maintenance Office. So my residency office, we maintain the primaries and secondary routes in Chesterfield County. And then our Richmond District office has an interstate maintenance office that maintain all limited access facilities in Chesterfield. So 95, 295, 288, Poite, and Chippenham are maintained by that group, which we work very closely with them. In addition to that group, our Richmond District has a maintenance team, and that includes our pavement management group, our structure and bridge partners, um, equipment, and roadside management. This is a brief overview of some of the maintenance services that we offer. I'll dive in a little bit deeper into a couple of them, but just give a general overview on some. Um, so in terms of site distance improvements, at our residency level, this encompasses things like tree trimming to improve site distance at intersections or on subdivision streets. Our roadside management group that I mentioned is housed at our Richmond district. They handle a lot of our wholesale tree trimming on um, longer routes. They get better prices per shoulder mile to do that planned work in advance. For pavement repairs, um, certainly coming out of the winter season, pothole patching is a large emphasis on our operations. Um, in Chesterfield County alone, my crews have patched 3,500, over 3,500 potholes since January 1st, um, use, utilizing a um, variety of methods, spray injection pothole patching from contractors, cold mix, and we also lease hot boxes to place hot asphalt. Um, I did want to highlight preventative maintenance versus our work order system. As you all are aware, we do have a 24-hour work order system where people can call in or submit work orders online for specific maintenance requests. Um, we certainly appreciate that system because it helps to notify us of specific issues that citizens might see every day that we might not um, have our eyes on on a daily basis. Um, but our main focus really is on preventative maintenance. So. While we use that work order system to try to get those specific maintenance concerns, um, all of our area headquarters maintain a six-month work plan where they're looking in advance of um, maintenance work that needs to be performed on roadways and try to get that preventative maintenance work done to reduce the number of work orders that we have um, before they become problems that citizens notice. Um, also, this time of year, we're preparing for our paving schedule. And so we're doing any needed maintenance work on routes that are on our upcoming paving schedule, um, like pipe replacements, um, ditching, 
pulling shoulders to make sure once we have that resurfaced um, roadway that we have proper drainage to maintain that asset. So to go into more detail on a couple of these, um, since this time of year, we do a lot of drainage improvements. Um, we are replacing and repairing cross pipes under roadways. Um, some of our larger diameter culverts are inventoried and maintained by our structure and bridge team. Um, but our crews are um, replacing pipes anywhere from 15 inch cross pipes up to um, 60, 72 inch diameter pipes, um, depending on the location. Um, we're performing ditching operations. In Chesterfield, we're primarily accomplishing this with excavators. Um, a, the picture here is of a grade all, a truck mounted excavator. Um, we do have some limited use of rotary ditching heads out in the more rural parts of the county, but um, primarily we're doing it through um, specialized excava ex excavation equipment. Um, additionally, we lease a Vactor truck, a sewer jet truck that allows us to um, operate throughout our residency, um, cleaning out pipes, culverts, drop inlets, um, storm sewers. So to get into VDOT's mowing practices, um, we are governed by a best practices manual, maintenance best practices, which dictates three cycles of mowing generally occurring between this time of year, mid-April through November. Um, my residency this year is leasing tractors that are arriving this weekend, and our litter pickup has begun in preparation for our first mowing cycle. So the contractors are out, I believe they started Monday um, for that litter pickup cycle in advance of our mowing. We do also in Chesterfield County have a median mowing contract for our narrower medians in the more urban areas. And that the first cycle on that contract began this past Monday as well. Um, in addition, just to point out, we do handle site distance complaints out of cycle. So while we do those three routine mowing cycles throughout the year. Um, if we review or hear through our work order system of any site distance complaints, we'll certainly go out and cut those even if it's not during the regular mowing cycle to ensure that we have site distance. Um, and then one final mowing practice that we're doing this time of year is maintaining stormwater management basins. Um, we have an inventory of over 110 in Chesterfield County um, that we're mowing in accordance with our BMP maintenance manual. Street sweeping, um, we have an annual list of sweeping routes. It's about 200 shoulder miles that are, um, I think Chesterfield recur uh, refers to them as welcome mat sweeping, kind of the major um, primaries into the county. Um, we have leased a sweeper truck within the last couple weeks that we plan to have for at least four months. We may extend the lease further than that. And we'll be addressing those annual sweeping routes at night, those higher volume roadways we'll be doing at night. And then we'll be running it also during the day, addressing work orders, subdivision streets, lower volume roadways. But we're running that sweeper truck 20 hours a day to 10 hour shifts with our crews for the next um, three to four months. Um, additionally, we do have a contract for sweeping services that we use for emergency response. So we have an incident manager at our residency that if he's out on an accident scene and needs sweeping services for gravel or whatever the case may be, we can call out an emergency contractor for that. Ms. Haley. Ms. Worley, uh, simple question. Are you, are you having trouble with staffing at all for any of these positions? Is that impacting or do you foresee that that will impact over the next, you know, four to six months as we're in the height of the season regarding both mowing and sweeping and, and trash? Yes, so we do have several vacancies within our residency. We're um, currently, I think we're down eight operators. Um, that's better than we were this time last year, I will say. Um, but it, it is a challenge. Um, for sweeping services in particular, we've identified just a couple operators who are fully dedicated to that for our entire residency to try to limit the impact of any one area headquarters. I think it's just helpful for our citizens to realize, I mean, as we're prioritizing and you know looking at workforce issues right now, 
Um, I, I can tell you, and I'm sure my colleagues feel the same, that sometimes these are the things that we get the biggest complaints about. It's like, why hasn't something been mowed? Why isn't this? And so I think recognizing that we've all got to be patient, um, you know, as everyone's addressing just labor issues in, ge sure. in general. Yeah, and I will note that that is one of the reasons we opted to lease our own sweeper this year rather than rely on contract is um, our contracting partners are also struggling with um, workforce. So. Uh, so State Force Construction, I'm sure you all are aware of a lot of these projects because you add them to your secondary six-year plan and approve the funding for them. Um, so as I mentioned previously, we do have a specialty crew in our residency that are primarily responsible for these types of projects. Um, so rural rustics, where we're hard surfacing gravel roads in the county, um, rural additions, where we're accepting um, private roads into the state system for maintenance, as well as um, turnarounds, turn lanes, things of that nature. Um, this is a photo of the Eanes Road bus turnaround. We've got a little more shoulder stone to add in the next week, but this is what it looked like on Monday. This was a project that you all added to your secondary six-year plan last year to allow for a turnaround area for school buses at the end of this road. So all that leading up to the 2022 paving program. So as I mentioned, a lot of the maintenance that we do is in preparation for paving. We want to make sure that all of our drainage system has been maintained properly so that when that paving comes in, we don't have to worry about that road for a long time. Um, so some of the things I'm gonna discuss are uh, VDOT's general pavement management targets, the targets that we're trying to meet in terms of pavement sufficiency depending on the roadway classification, what we have planned in 2022, and then a statewide um, public paving map that's available. So this is an overview of VDOT's pavement management targets. So these sufficiency ratings are, um, they vary depending on the roadway classification, whether it's interstate all the way down to low volume secondaries. And pavement ratings are collected on a five year rotation for um, low volume secondaries, and then they're collected on an annual basis for all other routes for interstate's primaries and high volume secondaries. Um, the sufficiency rating, you can see here that's a, it's a combined condition index that determines what the rating of a road is on a scale of one to 100. And then we use that to determine what percentage of our inventory has sufficient um, pavement. So we're building our paving schedules to try to meet these targets. And this is an overview of our resurfacing schedule this year and the lane miles that are identified for paving in this current um, construction season. Um, so in Chesterfield County in particular, we've been very focused on secondary roads. We see that that's where we have the most need. Um, it's also our largest inventory, of course. And so you can see we're planning to resurface many more lane miles on secondaries than on interstates or primary routes. Um, I will add that of these, it's a little over 117 total lane miles in Chesterfield County. This encompasses all treatment types. So it's plant mix asphalt, what you would typically see a mill and fill operation, but it's also latex, um, cape seal or slurry and surface treatment. In Chesterfield County, Previously, we've done a lot of plant mix and very little of the thinner, more preventative treatments. Um, we're trying to transition to do more of those thinner preventative treatments because they cost much less than plant mix and they extend the pavement life. Um, and so particularly on secondary roads, we see that as an opportunity over the coming years to improve our secondary system and our pavement ratings. Um, in terms of schedule, resurfacing work has already begun on our surface treatment, latex, and Cape Seal contracts, and plant mix contracts are kicking off um, starting next week and through the beginning of June, and those will continue throughout the entire paving season. Um, I did want to mention that we have a statewide paving status wrap, map. This was just updated within the last couple weeks, so if anybody went out and looked for it, 
previously it, it's just been updated with all of the contracts for 2022 now. Um, so this is open to the public, an open GIS system that allows you to view routes that are scheduled for paving this year. Um, you can click on the route, see what treatment type it is, um, and then the color changes depending on whether the route is scheduled, in progress, or completed. Um, there's also additional layers here that you can go back and view the last five years of paving schedules as well. So 2017 through 2021, um, you can see what was done previously. Um, so emergency operations, it's really an all year thing for us. So not necessarily something that we're preparing for eminently, but always prepared for. Um, so in the midst of our other maintenance activities, we're prepping for emergency operations. Um, as a district, we perform a mock hurricane or severe weather event um, annually to tweak our emergency action plan so that we're prepared for hurricanes, tropical storms for the upcoming season, um, as well as flooding. We're also um, constantly called out to incident management where we do traffic control for um, crashes or are working with our locality emergency personnel to try to get roads cleared in a quicker fashion. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention snow. Um, I know it's not snow season, but we're essentially a year-round snow operation, and um, we just had our first meeting this past week to prep for the 2022-23 snow season. With that, um, these are just a few resources available with links, including to that statewide paving status map um, and our customer service hotline number. Well, thank you, Ms. Worley. This has um, <clears throat> been a great presentation. And of course, um, I don't want to speak for everybody on the board, but I do think there's a general sense that we all um, are akin with Oliver Twist when it comes to VDOT, asking Mr. Limkins <laughs> for more. Um, and um, certainly recently, uh, Vice Chair Haley and I uh, went and took those board concerns to uh, the Secretary of Transportation, um, uh, Mr. Miller, and, and uh, had a great, great conversation with him, with staff. And, you know, I know for a fact that every one of our members on this dais can name neighborhoods that they uh, believe and probably with a lot of um, uh, support from an evidentiary standpoint, uh, you know, need need repayment, need some work, and and really need some more resources. And when I look at, you know, 4,400 lane miles, and look at 117, I'm I'm grateful for the 117. Don't get you know, don't get get me wrong, but um, we we've got to, uh, and I'm sure you've seen the the map uh, that VDOT has on road ratings and particularly on our secondary roads. I think it's 55% of our uh, of our secondary roads in, in Chesterfield are, are deficient according to, to VDOT's own standards. So, and I know you're the messenger, so I'm not um, trying to um, uh, put it on top of you today, but um, certainly we are grateful for the work that you do and we wanna keep a good relationship, good working relationship with you. And hopefully we'll get some more resources <laughs> Uh, from the state to help us with with these with these neighborhoods, and it is it's a lot of secondary roads. Uh, and I'll let other board members speak and have a chance to talk if they have comments. But we we certainly appreciate uh, the work that you do, and thank you for being responsive when uh, citizens want to talk about their neighborhood. I really appreciate the personal attention you give uh, when you come out uh, with those citizens. So thank you for that. Thanks for being here today. Mr. Appreciate Holland. so very much. And I look forward to talking with you more as well as uh, Mr. Epps in regards to uh, some, some concerns I have and issues. So appreciate your service. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Chair. Mr. Carroll. Yeah, uh, again, thank you for being here since, um, you know, we have a tremendous amount of roads that need resurfacing. I will ask a question. Is there a particular location on a website that the community can go and look at to see what the paving schedule looks like uh, for the roads that you've identified that they're going to be repaved. I imagine, for example, some of the neighborhoods that are going to be touched because we have a lot of aging neighborhoods that, quite frankly, the, the, the roads are cracking like, as described, like an alligator's back. Right. So is there a way for, the, for us to be able to push it out, for example, to the community members when they call and ask this question or you know, where can they go to actually see what the paving schedule looks like? 
So I'd say for 2022, that information is available on that statewide paving status map. Um, we do probably more than a year in advance. We've got a list of neighborhoods that we know need attention based on their CCI pavement ratings um, and identify those in, in advance for the, the following year. Um, we don't generally advertise what we've submitted for paving until we know what our allocation is going to be. Um, I'm certainly, as Mr. Winsley said, you know, we meet with people regularly to talk about their subdivisions. Um, we'll certainly say, you know, we've targeted your subdivision for paving on future years. I'd be happy to share that information, the subdivisions that we've identified that are in need. Um, but we can't really commit to specifically what year it's going to be done until we receive that allocation. Yeah, you know, I, I, I understand all that. I'm just for the people wondering which are up next, right. what's been approved and what can they expect? Right. Yeah, so 2023, um, I don't have the exact list in my head, but certainly I can provide that information of what we've targeted. Thank you. Mr. Engel. Mr. Chair. Um, so again, um, to echo the chair's sentiment, um, I'm not attacking you, um, just uh, questions. I know people ask me questions sometimes and I take them um, as they're directed at me, but just trying to help people understand um, as I said earlier, trash and traffic, and that traffic problems that I typically hear about, surprisingly enough, are not because people are stopped in traffic. They're because of um, people doing things on the road that they shouldn't be doing, which obviously you're not responsible for enforcement. But um, the trash part of it, if I heard what you said correctly, um, you typically do trash well you cut probably three times a year and you typically pick up the trash just before you cut so you don't make a lot of confetti when you cut the trash or cut the grass Correct. um and that happens between may and november and we're coming off of a season from that november to this april time where we've heard a lot from our citizens about trash because it goes with trash pickup i mean right. with cutting for you mm -hmm. um so it gets bad um we do try to supplement that work some through the county, but um, just uh, reiterating how important that is to the citizens because I can't tell you um, how many times I right. hear about that. Um, and then the, the traffic side of it, where there are places we can do better to work together, especially on our messaging, um, signage, like speed limits, um, there's a lot of people that disagree with the speed limit that's posted for their road. And um, sometimes they, I've seen you directly respond to some mm -hmm. citizens in my district recently, and I appreciated your interaction with them. Um, but sometimes they call and they don't necessarily get you and they get uh, told, well, speed limit, you need to talk to your um, Board of Supervisors representative. Everything, it's somewhere in the VDOT, response is, well, you got to start with your Board of Supervisors member. Okay. And um, some of the things that frustrate me with that are um, things like speed bumps. No matter how many studies, no matter what I do, because of snow removal, um, the snow can get taller than the speed bumps. You, the trucks can't see them. The plows can't see them. It tears up plow blades. It tears up speed bumps. We pretty much don't put speed bumps in VDOT roadways. But instead of telling that to our citizens they say well you got to start with your board of supervisors representative which is frustrating for me because i know i'm not going to be able to get the speed bump if we can find a way to um synchronize our communication with the citizens of chesterfield so that we're both delivering the same message um if that takes a little bit of extra time i'd be willing to sit down with somebody from sure. vdot but i just like to be able to have our messaging the same because I think it frustrates our citizens when they get one answer from one person and another answer mm -hmm. from somebody else. So if we could work together on that, I think that could cut down a lot of the frustration that I face with my citizens in my district. Sure. So thank you. Yeah, I'll add um, in terms of litter pickup, we, you're right, we do pick up in advance of the mowing cycle. Um, that's a focus of ours. Um, this past February, I believe, we also um, paid for a round of litter pickup on all the primary routes in all three of our counties. So that was another concerted effort that we did. I understand um, 
There's a lot of litter other places as well, but we tried to prioritize that. Um, in terms of traffic calming and um, speed limits, uh, you're right, we do have to have an engineered study to change a speed limit. Certainly, citizens don't always agree with what our traffic engineers determine um, that the speed limit should be posted at. Um, at least in terms of my staff, I, I'm hoping that um, we're coordinating closely with CDOT um, when determining um, whether to pursue um, additional fine signs for speeding. I think you're seeing a resolution on that this evening um, and determining whether that criteria is met on a certain roadway. Um, certainly my messaging with my team is that we're gonna do our due diligence to see if it would even be warranted before we ask the county to take a look at it because um, a lot of times it's not and we can give that message. So thank you. Thank you so much and appreciate you being here and appreciate your good working relationship with Mr. Epps um, as always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.